All right, guys, we're going to be having a little bit of fun with a vintage Beretta shotgun today. This is a 1201 FP. Let's do it. Uh-oh. Didn't cycle that. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know why that didn't cycle that buckshot round. That's very strange, but just the same, guys. Welcome back. This is Eric here, Zyrak Veteran 8888. And uh, today we're going to be talking about this little Beretta 1201. Uh, this is a surplus police shotgun. Uh, man, I hope I, I'm not needing to replace some parts in her. Uh, I hope we're not wasting our time here in this video, but we are going to be playing with this 1201. Uh, these can be had for pretty reasonable money. Uh, these were brought in in the 80s. And it's meant to be, it's kind of a, somewhat of a contemporary to the uh, Benelli uh, M1 Super 90. Okay, so it's a very simple uh, or similar type of, uh, you know, inertia type system. They are stupid light shotguns. Very, very light, very handy. And these were really popular in the 80s as a patrol shotgun uh, for uh, police and things like that. You've got an 18-inch barrel with ghost ring sights. It is a very lightweight gun. Very lightweight. And they kick relatively hard. And they also have a, uh, a pretty good ability to run relatively light ammunition. Oddly enough, I mean, those were <laughs> uh, nine pellet buckshot rounds that are moving out of the barrel at about 1330. So I don't know why it didn't run that one round. I don't know if maybe it's a maintenance issue or maybe I need springs or parts replaced, but we're gonna give the old gun a mulligan, guys. We are gonna keep running it and we're gonna group the gun for you, see how she does anyway. All right, not too bad. Let's see if it'll get these uh, <laughs> these one ounce slugs out of here. We're gonna run, let's run these true balls right here. Federal one ounce true balls. And we're gonna take out some of our uh, lingering, no good transient uh, sodas that have decided to take up residence on our range. And they're about to have a bad day. All right, so that was five. Okay. See if we can take care of a few slugs right here. It runs those 1,600 feet per second loads. Um, <laughs> oh, buddy. All right. <laughs> Boy, there's nothing better than just destroying some stuff with some slugs at close range. And my shoulder right now is feeling the wrath from this light little devil here. We're going to group some buckshot rounds for you here. All right, this is Federal White Box. Um, Double alt, nine pellet. Uh, this is the same ammunition we ran in the intro. Let's see if this chokes the gun up or gives us an issue in terms of cycling. I don't see why it would. Maybe that was just a fluke. Uh, we're gonna start on the right side. I'm gonna group it on the plate on the end. All right, so nine pellet, 1330 feet per second. White box federal. Did not cycle. Very odd. Very, very odd. I think you just need some springs. I think she needs springs. Okay, that's all right. We're gonna we're gonna continue to shoot the gun. I'm not worried about it. Okay. That was our federal nine pellet. We're gonna step up to PMC number four buckshot. This is one of my favorite little rounds for the house. This is a great, great, great buckshot round. I love it. Number four buck, 28 pellet. Again, 1330. So basically the same exact payload as what we just shot but with more pellets okay so it should be you know if the other stuff didn't cycle and this does what that'll tell us is we could have ammunition related failure all right okay number four buckshot on the plate next to it yeah buddy that's got a bit of a spread to it now the number fours get out of there. Now one thing I noticed too, those number fours kick a lot harder than that double-op buckshot. 
Uh, that could do have to do with uh, the way that it's buffered, the bufferant that they use. There's no telling. The powders, the burn rates of the powders, lots of different things come into play with all these different shotgun rounds. But when we test shotguns out, that's why we like to stuff different things in them so we know kind of what's going on. And gosh, that thing kicks so hard. That's the only bad thing about the 1201 is it is a very, very light shotgun. So it is gonna have some more felt recoil. Uh, you guys are probably familiar with the new Beretta 1301, which is kind of a modern take on uh, the old classic here. Those are out there. Beretta still makes the 1301. It's, it's actually, they just re-released the 1301 not terribly long ago. And uh, I haven't had a chance to actually shoot that particular gun yet. But from what I understand, it's uh, supposed to be, you know, a nice take on the original concept. All right, so moving down the line, again, this is moving 1,325 feet per second. This is nine pellet LE-127 law enforcement uh, buckshot with the flight control wad from Federal. We're gonna try a couple of these out, okay? Now that's the standard high velocity stuff, right? Like 1,300 feet per second? Uh, well, the box says 1,325, Jay. Okay, 1,325, yeah, that's but the high But we'll try it, we'll see, we'll see if it runs. Okay, now this stuff has a flight control wad. It's supposed to group really well. And in our experience, it's been really, really good little round. You know, it groups real nice. Let's see if it runs a 1201. Uh, what was the other gun we had this stuff choke up on? Um, the Vinci? The Vinci, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Vinci. All right, let's try it again. Yeah, buddy. That is what I'm talking about right there. That is a nice grouping buckshot round. And it runs a little 1201 here. Actually, the Vinci choked up on the low velocity okay. uh, stuff. They, it's 1145 feet per second. Okay, so the 1145s yep. are what was choking up. Do I have any 1145 left? I, I think we're out of it, but you know, my 1201 runs that stuff beautifully. We just don't have any of it. Okay, So. all right, that's okay. All right, now moving on to the next load. Now this is the one I'm not looking forward to, but whew, buddy, I'm gonna tell you something right now, man. <laughs> all right, Federal, <laughs> 1290 feet per second. Two and three quarter inch buckshot, 12 pellet magnum, double off. Basically it's a three inch shell stuck down into two stuck and three quarter. Stuck into a smaller package. <laughs> so guess what? It means it kicks even dang harder. Oh, that round is not pleasant. Oh God, this is gonna be unfun. I'll shoot a few of them just to be fair too. No, nah, we're good. All right, 12 <laughs> pellet. Whew, here we go. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Nice group there out of that 12 pellet. It's got a little bit, it's got some recoil, but man, that is nice. You know what? That's so nice that I'm gonna take a couple more of them. And those, those sodas over there are just looking so lonely and they're so mad that we're neglecting them. And we're gonna, we're gonna launch a bit of this buckshot at them to let them know that we care. And I'm thinking that my 1201 here is probably gonna need maybe some springs. Uh, she is getting a little bit old. We'll give her a mulligan today, guys. Nice. All right, 12 pellet Magnum uh, double aught. And we got some sodas down here. Soon not to be. Soon not to be. Oh! <laughs> All right, I got buckshot and a slug, one ounce slug, back to back. Here we go, first the buckshot. Now the slug. Oh, just oh, missed him. Oh, was swinging. All right, no, 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 no. Oh, out of slugs. Stand by. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I got, I got a Fiocchi 1600 feet per second, one ounce right here. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, good night. Swoop. Sit down. <laughs> ammo fairy, thank you. <laughs> you can wave your magic wand and make some ammo appear. All right. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's pretty much this gun in a nutshell, but you know what? I'm not gonna take all the punishment out of this lightweight sucker. I'm gonna make Chad shoot at some too. To be fair and to be serious though, this is a great option for somebody that wants a vintage auto loader and you don't want to spend uh, Benelli uh, M1 Super 90 or M2 money. Uh, you know, the Benelli options are a lot more expensive. They're a lot more well-known. 
they're probably in the big scheme of things a lot more well appreciated in terms of vintage auto loader and they are cool let's face it they're awesome but uh the beretta 1201 fp tends to be a very overlooked option uh sometimes you can find these uh, police surplus like we did uh what did we pay for these things um, I think I paid like 470 for mine out the yeah. door, under 500 bucks. Yeah, under under 500 dollars. So you know, not a bad vintage auto loader to scratch the uh, the vintage itch, uh, but at the same time, you know, keep them sprung well and keep them uh, well cleaned up and lubricated. I don't see any reason why they won't uh, you know last a long time. I'm imagining that mine might need some maintenance or issue. You know, might have a spring issue. We'll see. But all in all, not bad. Really cool little shotgun. All right, guys, so let's see if my uh, 1201 FP runs a little bit better. I don't know what's going on. These things usually work pretty well until we turn the cameras on. You know how that goes. Camera range gremlins, I guess. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, very, very similar to a Benelli Super 1 or M1 Super 90. Uh, but like Eric said, I mean, about half the cost, really. I mean, a lot of those on the used market can be $900 or $1,000. And uh, we went to a local shop, and they had these on the rack. And they only had one of this particular model um, at the time. And I picked it up, and Eric kind of fell in love with it, and he went and he actually found one. And they, they had a few different models. Uh, this is 18-inch gun. It's literally 18.1 inches with ghost ring sights. They had a model that was, I believe, 20 inches with the same five-shot tube. And um, they had actually like rifle sights on it. So you had a kind of a... a sort of a tangent style up here on the barrel itself instead of a receiver mounted ghost ring. Um, I just always like the look at these guns. I always thought they were so cool and just real streamlined looking with this large fore end and everything. And when Eric says light, we're talking like six pounds light. This is a lightweight shotgun and uh, it's just nuts. So these uh, unfortunately are not set up to ghost load like a uh, like a M1 or like an M2 or anything like that, they just will not go slow like a Benelli will. So it's just the, the bolt geometry and such is slightly different. So anyways, I'm gonna take out a few sodi pops and a few other targets of opportunity, shoot some slugs and uh, punish myself a little bit. Hey, uh, I need some more of that 12 pellet over here, man. Or do we have some? Oh, hey, here's a box. Let me, yeah, some let me have another box of that. I'll, hey, I'll, I'll take I a little punishment. More, All right, sodi pop. Oh boy, here we go. Oh shoot, that thing's hitting way high. <laughs> Good grief, that thing kicks like a mule. I haven't shot this gun in ages. Oh my lord. Let's try a few more rounds of that. Oh my god. Ooh, ammo fairy. Shot shell fairy. Good god. We'll be feeling that one later. You and I might have to go to the chiropractor after this. Oh, you're getting adjusted. Oh, I'm getting adjusted. You're getting adjusted while you shoot it. Dude, crap is just insane. And let's see, I think this is a slightly older version. Yeah, this one's a slightly older version. It actually holds six. The whole There's thing- There's a guy over in Italy going, it's a gonna adjust to you for you. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, the older versions, like they were produced like pre-1999, I think. Don't quote me on that, but the import laws for shotguns, stuff like that changed um, for magazine capacity. So that's why a lot of the newer shotguns like from Italy and other countries overseas from the US were imported with five shot tubes and then like extensions and stuff like that were put on after the fact. This one's actually an original six shot tube. Don't ask me, I, I don't know, it just, it works. So I've got seven rounds in here total, one in the chamber. And like I said, you can't ghost load it. If you guys don't know what ghost loading is, you basically load the tube, load a shell, and then you can pull the bolt back slightly on Benelli push that shell onto the lifter, and then drop another shell in the chamber itself so you have plus one, plus one, which is really cool. All right, let's punish myself a little bit more of this buckshot and take out those last couple of soda remnants right there. That's going right through there and just draining them out. Let's see about that one on the end. <laughs> Boy, that's some medicine right there. Yeah. Woo. All right. Tell us how you really feel. Oh man, my shoulders, uh, it's being tenderized. All right, 12 pellet, mini magnum. Meat tenderizer in a box. 
<laughs> oh, this is not going to be pleasant. I was recording slow mo of Eric shooting this earlier, and it's just. <laughs> what was that again? <laughs> that cringe. The cringe in slow motion. Oh, good lord. Ooh, that six just barely fits in that one. <sighs> All right. I'm going to shoot these uh, two steel targets over here on the uh, right and see how this stuff patterns for me here. Oh, God, this is going to hurt. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, that hurt. Just a little bit. Let's launch some slugs. We got some Federal True Balls here. Some of our most favorite slugs ever. These things really do work exceptionally well, except when you drop them on the ground. So one in the tube, or one in the chute, I guess. We'll open another box here. Or as the Brits would say, up the tube. Up the tube? I think that's what they up say. Up the tube? Oh, who knows? All right, let's see. I have room for one more? Ah, uh, unfortunately, no. It's probably a good thing. I'm gonna run these slugs and I'm gonna run some of the uh, low brass stuff I've got in here. Like I said, I've never really had a hitch with this thing. Um, when I first got it, I did have a very minor issue with the uh, lifter. The, uh, typically on like a, on a Benelli, you've got um, a little lever down here by the trigger guard that will kind of unlock the lifter and let a shell fall onto it. This one actually has a little push button right here on the lifter itself and the spring was well worn and this uh, pin was actually not extending all the way forward. So I was having some weird feeding and extraction issues with that. Change that spring out and everything else is pretty good to go. I think we just probably need to pull Eric's apart and that might make for an interesting video. So, all right, got one in the tube. All right, let's launch some true balls and... <sighs> all right, go for, go for your mine. Oh, no, you're not. Where are you at? <laughs> I sent him reeling. All right, let's see. A little popper back there about eh, 25 yards away. Man, this thing's hitting a little bit high and to the left, it looks like. Sit down. Woo! Boy, that sucker is hitting high. It smacks it though, don't it? It does, it's hitting high and to the left. I mean, one of the good things about the ghost rings is, you know, they are pretty easily adjustable, so definitely gonna need a little tweak on that. All right, let me run some of the low brass stuff real quick. And is that how it works? You run all the heavy stuff first, and then you switch to low brass, easy recoil and stuff, and it kind of eases that pain a little bit. Is that how it works? You I don't think say so. that. I don't know about all that. Um, when I first got this gun, after I got the repair done up at Moss with Ray, um, I took this thing out and I, this gun was cycling like low brass, low recoil target loads like Winchester double A's, like it was made for it. And it was just the most beautifully shooting shotgun that I had at the time. And uh, the thing just works. It, it really does do quite well. But like I said, I mean, Eric's, like he mentioned, you know, might just need a little bit of a tweak, whatever the case is, but we're going to figure that out. But so far, I mean, no hitches with this one, which is crazy. But, all right, let's run some bird lows. We'll see how fast I can run this thing. I'm not anywhere as fast or good behind the trigger of a shotgun as Eric is. I mean, he can make these things cycle as fast as they'll go, but I'm not, not really sure if this thing will kind of hammer fall or not. I don't think he can keep up with you, man. I don't know. Let's see. Try, try one that more again. time. Try that again. That's not bad. Like I said, nowhere near as good as Eric is. It's one of those things. All right, let's see if I can get my trigger finger working on some more of these low brass loads real quick. And I'm gonna move on to a few other things. I'm gonna shoot some of that flight control at kind of longer range. I'm really curious to see what it'll do at like, yeah, you know, 35, 40 yards or so. And I might even take a shot at that plate out there at 75 if I can get these sights on right, so. All right. <laughs> that thing's so light, it's like jumping out of my dang arms. <laughs> Forget that crap. I'll leave, the, I'll leave the fast finger work up to Eric there. 
All right, let's see. So, flight control. Okay, yeah. Yep, this is the 1325, the full power law enforcement stuff. All right, let's see. I'm just gonna shoot five. So, like I said before, with typical Benelli's, you gotta like load the lifter, because otherwise it won't load. So you load the lifter and then chamber around and then you're good to go. So, all right, 35 yards with flight control. This plate is kind of sitting a little low back there in it, let's see. Maybe it'll get over that bar there. Now, a couple of rounds landed like right over the top of the head and over the shoulders there, but like maybe a maybe about a 10 or so inch spread, give or take. Let's That's see. not terrible at all. Uh, let's see, 40 yards. Yeah, it's in about eight inches high. All right, 75 just for the fun of it. Huh. Can't tell how many went on the plate there. About four pellets. Let me aim a little lower, see if it's hitting real high. I don't know, it was pretty much dead on with the buckshot at that range. Shoot. I'll take that. A slight sight adjustment, I think this thing will be pretty much golden. Um, one of the main reasons I picked one of these up was, like I said, I just kind of like the look of it for one thing, but also a light shotgun for like my wife with a relatively short length of pull for the most part. Um, and this thing is just a really, really awesome shooter with some of the low velocity uh, Federal Tactical Flight Control Buckshot. That stuff is moving just slightly over 1,100 feet per second. And some shotguns that stuff will choke up in on as far as semi-autos, but this gun, is, at least mine, runs that stuff really, really well and it's light recoiling and my wife has shot it several times and it works really, really well. Um, but she enjoys it quite a bit and that's one of the reasons I, I picked it up, like I said, but overall kind of a classic sort of vintage shotgun, I guess you could say that. This one was uh, made in the like mid to late 90s, if I'm not mistaken, um, and just really a cool gun for not a whole lot of money. Um, like I said, when we picked these up, they were sub $500. I'm not sure what they're running these days or really how available they are, but definitely if you're interested in a quality semi-automatic shotgun, keep an eye out for them. And also the 1301s, like Eric mentioned, those are out now and they are kind of an improved version of this sort of inertia system. And uh, from everything I've seen on those guns, I have not yet handled one personally myself, nor Eric to my knowledge, but I've seen a lot of very good positive things about that particular shotgun. And I've seen some people running them in like three gun and other type of competition scenes like that. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and this look at this pretty cool little vintage shotgun here. And uh, special thanks to all our Patreon supporters and those of you who support us through ventures like Mancans. Those funds do go right back into the channel to help us create this content and it is much, much appreciated. So stay tuned guys, we got a lot more on the way. We'll see you next time.